Yeah, yeah. Go, go. Hi, Gabby, what are you in? Yeah. Sorry, I've been trying to keep my hair with him. Yeah, you can, but Mike is marching. Well, over you your sister's shivering away here. Yeah, yeah, Do I look for them? <laughs> Ready, Am? Um, I'm ready. ready. Back in there. I'm going to tape you in the way. No, he's not. He's walking. Four inches. Another one. <laughs> 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 I've got it. Hey, I'll go to you. Oh, God. Maybe you could just yeah. send you yeah. all to <laughs> 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 the light's going. I'm not doing it for a living. Yeah, go on. They're driving back. Oh, wait. Probably only an hour, but it's a long distance yeah. country road. I think it's good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they've done it, haven't they? When I was... One of them must be a keeper. Come on! No, I got one anyway. Yeah. Thank God. Here we go. One more. Alright, last one. Yeah, one more. Then draw, drawing the line. Then drawing the line. <laughs> this will be the best one now. Yeah. Small. Who is it? Okay, let's, uh, let's make a stop. I just first want to thank um, Sue and George again, who hosted this, what, three years ago? And hosted it again today, and it's an awful lot of work. And we've all, you know, enjoyed the food and, every, and the organisation and the drink too. So I got oh, yeah. the right way around this time. I said George and Sue. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and Sue and George. Perhaps you're cooking more food, George. A few years ago, um, George really sort of prompted this by looking up records which led to um, William, William and George. And William so Coates, who we thought for quite some time, in fact, until not long ago, that was our earliest traceable ancestor. And about the same time, I had a DNA test done in, as part of the, the uh, genographic, you know, the geographic magazine's genographic project. And they can do a, 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 a Y DNA test on males, and they determine then uh, what, what's called a haplogroup that you belong to, of almost A to almost A to Z haplogroups, and this. All of the people here now in, in the Coates family of this line of descent belong to a group called the I Hapler group. And they can then trace by where are other people with the same traceable DNA in the world, find out pretty much your migration route out of Africa about 60,000 years ago, through the Middle East and through the Balkans and into Spain when the last ice age came about uh, 15,000 years ago and our ancestors hid in Spain for a few thousand years until the ice receded and then migrated up through France and so on and it appears most likely that we then went up into Scandinavia and my DNA now matches the 40% uh, of the DNA of males in Scandinavia, so it seems likely that we actually came to the UK as part of Viking invasions from Norway or, or Sweden or Denmark, we don't, don't really know which. And it's partly the reason for the sort of fair hair and blue eyes that we see among some of us.
if you see someone with blue eyes, they're a, a, an eye haplogroup group member, because that's the only haplogroup group that has blue eyes. Not, you know, not all, not all eye haplogroup group people do, but if you haven't got blue eyes, you're certainly an eye haplogroup group member. And that person has, had, has shared an ancestor with you, probably about, common ancestor, about 8,000 years ago. So that was an interesting aspect too. I've gone also through some background on family names to trace where the name came from. And you, I, I can ask for some guesses. How many variations do you think there are of the spelling of the word Coates? Or of the name Coates? Three. Mm -hmm. Three. <laughs> There's 20, I think it's 27, if you can believe it. So there are 27 ones that I've been able to document of the spelling of the name Coates in all sorts of things. It's just out of interest. When we were down in Cheddar Church yesterday, we got the list of all <coughs> past vicars. I didn't see it before. Back in about 12... Somewhere there was a someone de Coates, but C O T E S. Yeah, which is one of the forms of the name. So the surname seems to have begun about a thousand years ago, and um, it's very difficult to get back that far in record, so we've gone back as far as we can. And the earliest traceable ancestor that we can find uh, was born in, eight, in 1763, just north of Ipswich. So the family actually comes from Ips, just north of Ipswich in, in Suffolk, and then was in Suffolk for some years. And it's uh, sort of accidental that we've, you know, kind of come to the West Country in the course of time, because the you might say the centre of gravity of the family was really in London. And one one particular of our ancestors uh, got a job in Bishopsworth as a schoolmaster there. And that's how the remainder of us have come to be in the West Country. But really, the origins in recent times, anyway, 1700s, is uh, in Ips, just north of Ipswich. And we might be able to go a bit further back than that, but I didn't have time in the course of doing this to follow up any earlier records than that. Um, I've gone through some family trees and so on, and um, put together our family tree as much as I can, and those family trees that intersect with ours through marriages at different stages, so you'll find that in here too. Um, and then uh, to put this, uh, the lives of the ancestors in context, I've taken three of those centuries and put some main events that happened and so on because they lived their lives in quite different circumstances than we do today so I thought that might be of interest and then all of you have contributed to your own profiles and I've written the profiles for all of the ones which were which are not alive and uh, around today but it's been quite intriguing in a number of ways um, primarily because it's a lot of, it's about the family, so you're, talk, you're, you're doing an exercise about people that you know or were ancestors of yours, but secondly because it's a kind of exercise in detective work really, I mean you're following clues and you know you make discoveries and uh, then you go off on blind trails and so on, but um, the main source is, record, is uh, census records and uh, either births, deaths and marriage records and those all go back to about the middle of the 1800s in England. And uh, some, we've had some emigrations, two families go to the US. So somewhere in San Francisco and somewhere in Los Angeles we've got relatives that we've never known about. And I didn't know about that when I was there or I might have gone to the local, at least the local graveyard and see if I could find some tombstones. And two, um, two families have gone to Canada. And then our family has gone to Australia, so there's sort of five significant emigrations from the UK. So I'll give you all copies of this. At the back there are appendices which um, summarise things that are in the text. That one, for example, is all of the North American migrations of those people that did go there. And you can see those sorts of things. And in a table form I've kind of collated all of the information I found. So this is who the, person, who the person is, who the parents were, when were they born, where were they born, who did they marry, where did they marry, when did they marry, where did they die, um, some notes and where the origins of all, all that information came from. The reason all of that detail is there is in about 10 years time, censuses get released um, very long after the origin date of the census. In England, it's commonly been a hundred years after the date of the census the details are released. 
on the assumption that everybody who might be offended by having their details released is now dead. Uh, they've just released a little while ago the 1911 census, which was about two years early. And if they keep going like that, we should get the next one in another 10 years from about now. And the US and Canada do much the same thing, but they have shorter retention dates. So we've already seen the 1930 US census, and we've seen the 1921 Canadian census. But we can't kind of progress any further with tracing those families until the next ones come in, in about a decade's time. If I'm around in 10 years' time when those censuses come about, I'll do that. If not, there are instructions in one of these appendices <laughs> on how to proceed, which censuses to look at, to trace who, where, and uh, somebody might be able to follow that up. And there's a few other odds and ends here, you know, what, what do all these funny terms mean, like third cousin once removed, and things like that, which um, might interest you too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all the appendices about how to trace things. Um, some terminology that's used in genealogy uh, that might uh, mystify you in the text if you don't know what it means. But broadly, it's just then a collection of um, stories of individuals, really. So, in the front of this, I've got a list of those who have, who have a copy, and I'll go give those out in this order, if I can. And you just one for you. There's, there's a CD in the back. Well, there's yeah. a CD yeah. in the back of each copy, which has this book in it in its entirety. But in the course of doing the research, there is at least this much more information that isn't in the book because it doesn't directly relate to line of descent coaches that are here. In Framlingham, in Suffolk, where a couple of families spent two or three generations, there are lots of coaches in that vicinity, some within three kilometers of each other, and I would assume that they were cousins or brothers or sisters of coaches that are, you know, in our direct descent. But I haven't been able to prove that that's the case. But just in case later on more evidence comes to light, I've kept all of those records that I found in individual form and in tabular form, and those are all on that CD. The other thing is that um, online now you can see not only a transcript of uh, an individual's entry in a census for, say, 1891, but you can see the image of the original census form. But they're very... They're, they, they're large images, and when you condense them, they're almost illegible at this size, even if you brought them down to a full page. So they're not very easy to incorporate in here. But most of those original images are on that CD too. This is all for the benefit of whoever picks this up and runs with it in the future. You know where that, you know where that <laughs> is. Yeah. I don't know whether it will be Glenn or it might be you. And you have shown a great interest in this. So that's a possibility. Now, um, I've produced 16 copies, and I've given one already to Antinan. That was the reason for coming at this timing, really. Uh, Anita, you get the next one. Mm -hmm. This is your copy. She's absolutely thrilled with it. She was extolling it for about 10 minutes on the phone <laughs> the other day. Uh, next one is mine, which I've already got. The next one is George's, and he's already got his. Here's Norman. I gave you yes, yes. No, I didn't get one, did I? <laughs> <laughs> I get two. Oh, yours is <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. These were 1.25 kilos each, so of my 20 kilo baggage allowance on the plane, this was 18 <laughs> kilos. Why are you taking back in his place? I had this other suitcase that I kept under the counter with everything else in it. <laughs> Weigh that one. Mm -hmm. you know. 
and off I went with the carry on one, which I could <laughs> had to make look very light. <laughs> <laughs> He's been washing the same pair of Andrew pants out every day. Yes, uh, Wendy. Ben. Sit down, I'll bring it over. Thanks, Dad. There you go. Nice one. Well, I'm glad we didn't end up as coot stack. <laughs> coots, yeah, there's several coots, isn't there? And, it, and the business of traceability of people in records is that the misspelling of names is constant. The number of emails I've written to Ancestry.com, what was the, the nice Benjamin. 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 Benjamin Wills was spelt E B J M and then the rest of the word Benjamin. And I can't, you come across these records by accident because you search for them by name and of course the search doesn't find them because their name has been transcribed wrongly. And when you accidentally come across it, I write in and say, this was a, a relative of mine and blah, 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 and the name is actually spelled like this. And the letter came back saying, we have considered your request and we consider that the spelling E B, J, M, I, N, is within acceptable range of error. <laughs> so I wrote back and thanked them for this and said, I know that you think that this spelling is within an acceptable range of error. <laughs> I didn't swear at them. No, you're going to try, you know, anyway, they finally, they finally recognised it and said they'll alter the record. Well, you said that you've got the marriage certificate, you've got the birth certificate, yeah. the wolf. The well, here it is. And you should have given me a your response, like but misspelled every word in your, in your <laughs> yeah. response. But it's very common, so if anybody ever does take this up, you you, you have to be very oh. persistent to find these misspellings. You're not really selling it, Dad. <laughs> 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 well, you and you and his next, and he's got one. Where's David? Uh, where's David sitting? Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, you there. there you go, David. Thank you, Dad. Thanks. Now, one thing I will say is um, the late discovery uh, by getting hold of some Framlingham Parish records of two further generations back to 1763 meant that I kind of almost ran out of time for doing this, and it took another month to write up those discoveries. And I went to the printer that I prearranged I would go to and took them the CD and said, look, I've checked all this on screen and so on, and um, this is the copy to print. They said, well, we'll just print you a draft copy to check, you know, on paper. It's different than checking it on screen. And I said, okay. So I took it back, and I found 160 more errors in this paper <laughs> copy than I found on screen. So I took, did it all on the CD, took the new CD down and gave them, and they said, We'll just run you a paper copy because, you know, just, just <laughs> double check. And I took that paper copy back. There were another 68 errors in that one. And it just went on and on, the number diminishing but never coming to zero sort of thing. And I only had time to do that seven times with them. And I was still finding errors. And I was so embarrassed about this with them, I thought I was taking all their time up. And they said, oh, don't worry. For amateur writers, we normally have to go up to at least 10 of these copies before you get all the errors out. And since I didn't have time, we've subsequ I've subsequently found quite a number of errors still in there. They're mostly not factual, they're mostly grammatical or format errors now. 
And you will find on a couple of pages where I've put a date of 18-something, and it should have been 19-something, or the converse, and I've altered it by hand. So there are a few of those things there. But if, in reading it through, you find more errors, please email them to me, because I'm already collating a, uh, another copy which is, uh, should be error-free when we eventually get to print it. So please let me know if you find things, not things that you object to in the text. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry, Mum will. <laughs> I, they, any error on any page just yeah, pokes sure. well, I thought oh, yeah, yeah. I did too. Oh, I've yeah. done it for lots of people in the past. When you're reading your own you script, you can read your own yeah. script. That, that's what they said. They said, who's proofreading this for you? And I said, well, I am. There's, there's no one else. And they said, that's the worst thing you can do, mm -hmm. because what you read is what you know you meant to yes. say. And anyone else doing it, and I've read over, I found a couple of things this morning. I, do, I mean, I opened the page, and I've read this page 50 or 100 times. And right there, suddenly, the first thing you see, because you're not reading it, your eye just hits the page, and there's an error. Yeah. Yeah. So let me know all those errors, and uh, I'm sorry they're still there, but um, factual and grammatical what errors, like? and no objection to content. <laughs> 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 well, can, I, can I just say a few words about I started it us off in a very low-key way about know, five, six years ago now, and I've got back to William Coates and just the next generation back. Um, and then, obviously, Doug took over and produced this fantastic piece of work. All I can say is I could have never achieved what he's achieved there, and I would never have attempted it. I mean, if I'd have produced anything, it would have a few pieces of uh, A4 stapled together. Um, but I think we, we do owe a great you know, vote of thanks for this. Um, it's something which... You know, I just never imagined it would be in that sort of format. So I think you ought to sort of just... Yes. 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 I think the, um, the usual human foibles of um, vanity and voyeurism will mean that you'll go to certain pages when you open it. <laughs> 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 uh, but it, it, there, is, there is a sense to reading it right through when you eventually get the time from front to back and there's a sort of a, a meaningful sequence of it. It's a history, so history is, you know, a process and uh, a sequence and it does make sense, I think, to read it through once you've gone through the interesting bits that you're going to head for first. So. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Dan. I mean, when I, when I wrote my stuff, I was really impressed with the way that you praised my life. <laughs> and it came out a lot more interesting to me than I did it myself. The bits I made up were pretty good. Didn't you say, that, which might not be picked up if you read it, that all the time you're going through the ancestry, that we're, the Coates family generally were living a little bit longer in each... Oh, yeah, that's an interesting point. I mean... There are a number of side trips you do when you're doing this research, and I think three in particular, well, there was certainly I got involved in looking into the last ice age, and I knew nothing about, I thought it was millions of years ago. Last ice age only finished about 8,000 years ago. And there are some really strange theories about the ice age, one of which, I, you can look it up on the internet, Hatwood's theory is really worth a look as to why that ice age happened. Um, the, the whole thing of genetics was interesting to sort of explore into, about which I knew little or nothing before. Um, one of the ones. Uh, and just the historical context. But part of that historical context was the longevity of people back in history in England in the, well, in the 1800s was only about 45 years. So the average lifespan was about 45 years. In the six major cities of England in the 1800s, the average lifespan was 26 years. So that, you know, that it was so insanitary and crowded and um, communicable diseases were so common that uh, people lived to 26 in cities. And it might be the reason why you know, some of our ancestors got out of London. You know, it was just it was just awful to stay there. I mean, the London sewer system was only finished yeah. in 1865. So, you imagine a city of that size that went all that time with no, essentially no sewage system. Um, so, but anyway, we seem to have gone through, as far as I can tell, with dates of death, and the family has really outlived its 
normal life expectancy hugely. We've actually got Nancy in the US who lived to be 101. Um, so we've we've often lived, I think uh, William was was an exception dying at 32. He died of an illness. He died of pleurisy at the age of 32. But in general, we've lived to a kind of a ripe old age against the but population at large. 94 yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, so um, we seem to have reasonable genetics in that respect at least. Anyway, I hope you all enjoy yeah. going through. Thank you. Thank you.